afternoon to the parents, faculty, staff, and of course to my fellow graduates. I'd like to welcome and thank you for joining us on this momentous occasion, our college commencement. As we gather here today, adorned in our regalia and filled with anticipation, it's with great honor and humility that I stand before you as a representative of our incredible graduating class. Before we continue, I'd like to acknowledge the lives lost to unconscionable violence in both Israel and Palestine, as well as the students, as well as the students who were unable to continue their education through the senseless acts of violence and conflict around the world. As this graduating class completed our senior year, over 35,000 Gazans were killed, more than 14,000 of them children and the right to education was stolen from thousands of Palestinian students. While we're here today in the midst of such tragedy, my mind lingers on the words of Bell Hook. Our freedom is sweet. It will be sweeter when we are all free. Over the course of the past year, I've been reflecting on my experience at Columbia and what I'll be taking with me as I walk across this stage. Every graduate that sits in this room has gained so much insight and knowledge from our phenomenal professors who have encouraged our growth and creativity since the moment we first set foot on campus. With this in mind, I still can't help but feel that the Columbia experience goes far beyond the classroom. How can we capture four years of life in just a few short minutes. I could echo American philosopher and social activist, Dr. Cornel West, who described education as soul crafting, or Palestinian-American activist and author, Dr. Edward Said, who spoke about education as a tool for empowerment and liberation. I could also talk for hours about the way that courses like culture, race, and media, or equality and justice, have fundamentally altered the way that I write and interpret media. But I don't have hours, so I'll spare you the details. Instead, I'll try to sum up what I've learned at Columbia in one sentence. Columbia has taught me what it means to be alive. Many of us began our journey at Columbia in the fall of 2020. In the midst of a global pandemic, we each decided that our education could not wait. We eagerly began the school year online, obsessing over the COVID case report numbers and hoping that our hybrid classes would continue into the next week. During this time, I blasted Stephen Sondheim's Being Alive from company like my life depended on it. Uh, my apologies to all of my many roommates over the years, including my mom, who was undoubtedly my favorite for the semester that I spent at home. <laughs> Sondheim's lyrics raced through my mind. Don't be afraid that it won't be perfect. The only thing to be afraid of, really, is that it won't be. With my constant replaying, the song's meaning only grew to reflect what I was experiencing, and it made me feel so grateful for the life that I've been fortunate enough to live. Sure, it wasn't the freshman year we all expected. We had to navigate class icebreakers in Zoom breakout rooms, <laughs> learn to solder in our dorm rooms, <laughs> attempt to foster in friendships exclusively through Instagram messages, and take final exams in our childhood bedrooms. Life handed us lemons, and the incredible efforts of students, faculty, and staff here at Columbia made for some very sweet lemonade. The fall semester of 2021 brought all of us back on campus to experience Columbia College Chicago in all of her glory. I'll never forget making my first college friend playing grocery bingo at 30 East, bonding with my roommates over our shared love of devil dogs, or my first blood ball that I attended with my tutoring center coworkers who had quickly become my family. From open mic nights to senior showcases, there really never was a dull moment spent on a campus full of so many friends. Just as Sondheim's lyrics had promised, I had found someone to proud me with love. In the past two years, we've all learned what it means to step into the role of an upperclassman. Professors were no longer accepting our tardiness without explanation. 
If they were anything like Professor Vizigadarji, they playfully demanded that you bring donuts for the entire class if you dared to venture in too late. They expected each of us to step up and for our work to reflect the time that we spent learning and building our foundation. They inquired about internships and job opportunities, and they were no longer just suggesting that we visit the Career Center. But the tough love and constructive criticism wasn't to push us away or to make us feel small. It was to show us everything that we were capable of, to push us further than we ever thought possible. With their guidance and mentorship, we were able to produce short films, headline shows, display our work in galleries around campus, host radio shows, manage artists, sell our creations in Shop Columbia, photograph touring artists, and build musical instruments. Our professors did more than just teach. They were someone to force us to care. As we reflect on our time at Columbia, from the strike in the fall of 2023 that reminded us all too well of the earliest days of the pandemic, to the brutally cold start of our final spring semester and countless hours of practicums and lectures, we learned this year what it means to really want something. This hasn't been an easy journey for us, but it's been worth it. Six months ago, I went to see company with one of my best friends from Columbia. The show ended with the song, Being Alive, and I couldn't help but feel that my time here has come full circle. I used to play being alive and hope to feel less alone. Four years later, I realized that I am far from alone. Many of us here today are unsure of exactly what will be tomorrow. We might be heading to grad school to further our studies or into a career in the field that we've always dreamed of. Or maybe we're taking some time to breathe and to figure out exactly what's next in our journey. Regardless of where we're headed, it's still a daunting task to walk into the unknown. But let us remember how we started our journey. We walked into Columbia feeling alone and afraid of all that was to come. And today we will graduate together feeling alive. We have a lot to be proud of, and we also owe a great deal of thanks to Columbia and every single person who crowded us with love, forced us to care, and helped us survive being alive. Congratulations, class of 2024. Let's go out into the world and show everyone what it means to be alive.